Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what I have for you today my friends, well we're going to kick things off with a couple of things from Microsoft, one of which is a very interesting rumour regarding what they're planning with Surface. And reportedly Microsoft are planning to release a monitor only version of the Surface Studio in the year 2020. Now this is a claim made by Brad Sams in a new book which actually talks about the history of the Microsoft Surface. And they say, quote, Microsoft will finally deliver a Surface monitor in the 2020 time frame. Now, obviously it's not just going to be a normal monitor, it's going to have that sort of Surface twist to it. Apparently Microsoft are going to be go into a modular design, which is actually something that was hinted at recently by the Surface Chief Panos Panay in an interview with The Verge. But of course, that's far from confirmed. In fact, you know, the existence of this thing is far from confirmed. Now, it's not all we see reported for the future of the Surface, as apparently we're going to be seeing a Surface-branded ambient computing device. And what does that actually mean, I hear you ask? Well, it's going to be something that brings Cortana into a office or home environment, so perhaps something along the lines of the Amazon Echo. I mean, that's just a theory on my part. But the point is, Microsoft is planning a lot of stuff for Surface. It's obviously not just going to be tablets. Obviously, recently they did the Surface headphones. Obviously, they've already started to expand beyond this, and we're going to be seeing lots of tech coming out from them if th these reports are correct. But the more interesting thing we have from Microsoft is actually regarding the Xbox One X. Now, it's no secret that Microsoft has been, well, kind of cagey when it comes to actual sales figures of not only the Xbox One vanilla, but the S and of course the X as well. But of course we have the MPD group, which does track various things in the US. And one of those things is of course, the sales of console hardware. And we have some comments from Matt Piscatella of that very same group. And he says that the Xbox One X is quote, performing phenomenally this year. And we do have a full quote here from Matt to kind of give you more context for his comment. And he said, Xbox One sales show the highest growth of the three major hardware platforms in the US this year. And the Xbox One X in particular has been performing phenomenally. Year over year, growth like this at this point in the cycle has never been seen before, driven by launch of the Xbox One X and new content delivery efforts. It's a mid-generation turnaround the market's never seen before. This qualifies as phenomenal, even if not market leading. Now obviously, I've said many times, as has pretty much everyone else on the face of the planet at this point, that obviously the Xbox One and obviously the X are, are great and all, but it, this particular console generation for Microsoft has been a bit lacking in true exclusives, like true console sellers, if you would. But obviously the one thing that the X, well not the one thing, one of the things I suppose I should say that the X has going for it, is obviously that it has the true 4K. We have additional 4K texture packs for games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and We Happy Few, and Lord knows how many other games. There's a whole laundry list of games that have 4K support, whereas we only see, say, 1080p, or just for example, on the PS4 Pro. So that's probably the reason, or at least one of the reasons, that the X has been doing so well, because it is, it is a really nice machine, to be fair. Like, if I didn't already have a PC, I would be like, yeah, get the X, because, you know, if you want 4K without having to, you know, cough up a kidney or two, that's uh, probably your best bet. Now, I've also said many times now that Microsoft, obviously, they, you know, they've, they've conceded this generation to Sony a long time ago. But you know, this, the Xbox One slash X slash S has all been doing well. It's just obviously not been doing well as the PS4 slash PS4 Pro. But Microsoft have not been shy about how they're looking towards the next generation. They have been very open about the fact that they're, they're purchasing studios left, right, and center. And it's just going to be really interesting to see how they tackle the next generation. They have also been very keen to have that flag of most powerful console to wave around. So seeing if they can hold on to that title is, is going to be intriguing as well. But we're going to move on from that to something, a bit of an update, I guess I should say. So we have had of course the RTX series out in the market in the wild as it were for a while now and of course ray tracing was detailed alongside it and it wasn't long before 3D Mark announced that they're going to be getting, giving us should I say a full benchmark 
for real-time ray tracing benchmark Port Royal. Now, unfortunately, this particular benchmark is not going to be in the hands of us users for some time, January 2019. I suppose it's not that long away, but at least a couple of months, I suppose you should say. But we're going to be seeing exactly what we have in store with this particular benchmark in just a couple of weeks at the Galax GOC Grand Final Overclocking Contest, which is being held in Vietnam on December the 8th. So we're going to be basically getting a little bit of a preview of this benchmark and how shiny it is, because of course Port Royal is going to be the first dedicated real-time ray tracing benchmark for gamers. And we're going to be comparing you know, real-time ray tracing performance of any graphics card that obviously supports DirectX ray tracing now obviously as per usual drivers and blah 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 need to be all updated if you're doing running benchmarks you probably don't need me to tell you that but just to be safe but this is going to be really handy because obviously we did have that benchmark of sorts with the shapes and stuff that was added with the creators update not too long ago but a real gaming benchmark is going to be invaluable to be honest according to 3d mark port royal was developed with inputs from all of the people you would expect nvidia intel amd and of course many others as well they also worked with microsoft for the implementation of the directx ray tracing api now again this is only limited at the moment, at least, to graphics cards that support DirectX ray tracing, but they are expecting more cards to get support in 2019. So perhaps you can start, you know, benchmarking your older cards and that sort of thing once that support is added. But at launch, it is only good to support that, the cards that do support that. So I'm really curious to see what they have in store for us there, but we also have a sort of similar announcement from Intel, as they have started sending out invites for their Architecture Day event, which is going to be hosted on the 11th of December. So we've got two events in fairly close proximity to each other. So we're going to be looking at a bunch of new tech breakthroughs and upcoming products, and also a bit of a deeper look at what we should expect for them in terms of their roadmap in the next few years. So they have been a bit, well, cagey with actual real details as to what they're going to be discussing here, unfortunately, but Intel are going to be discussing their architecture strategy and also discussing data-centric, data-centric, excuse me, architectures and technology. So perhaps we're going to hear more about what they've got planned for 10NM because, of course, there's been repeated reports that they've cancelled it. Intel have been very keen to be like, no, 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 that's not the case. So they're probably going to be mentioning that i would assume unfortunately we're not going to be seeing any graphics products mentioned during the event so if you're looking forward to more information on arctic sound i am sorry but i'm here to throw water over those flames of promise right now because well it's not going to be out till 2020 and they probably don't have a lot to discuss yet because it's extremely early for this particular thing but what they will probably mention is the underlying architecture for arctic sound that is most likely at least a fair shoe in to be brought up at some point. But more likely we're going to be seeing a focus on the Cascade Lake AP processors, the architecture behind that. Of course we saw some performance benchmarks not too long ago and obviously they did say they're going to be focusing on data center and so on. So, as I say, we're not going to be seeing like Arctic sound as in like the complete product there, but we're most likely going to be seeing the architecture behind it. We're also going to be seeing more about Cascade Lake as well, hopefully more about what they're planning for the future of the desktop roadmap. You know, when are we actually going to be seeing, you know, consumer level 10NM processors out on the market, that sort of thing, because obviously there was that report the other day regarding Comet Lake, and at least if the report is correct and true, that is still going to be based on 14NM. So I am starting to wonder, despite Intel's assurances that it's all fine, what is actually going on there? But of course, we're going to have to wait and see just a couple of weeks before we find out exactly what is going on. But we have something really interesting next up from Amazon, as Amazon are actually working on a processor. I know. We have the Amazon Graviton processor. It is an ARM-based processor, and apparently it was almost going to be an AMD processor, but... Apparently, Amazon were not willing to place all their chips in one basket. So Amazon has instead invested in ARM, and they're hoping to compete with Intel. So, you know, starting a small Amazon, why not? So what do we actually have in terms of raw information, specs, performance, all that sort of stuff? Well, we do have some specs details. Again, it is based on ARM, the Cortex-A72. It's going to be a 16-core processor, 
and we're going to be seeing these processing cores clocked at 2.3 gigahertz. Now unfortunately Amazon's designs are primarily targeting high-end smartphones so we're not going to be seeing this take on like the really top dogs from AMD or Intel anytime soon but it is still interesting that they're doing this and honestly like really interesting and not really all that surprising because Amazon have their fingers in all sorts of pies really but uh just curious how like they could have gone with AMD but just decided to go with ARM instead. So what's also interesting is that thanks to a report from the register we also see some of the old server plans from Amazon as well with various sources saying that we're going to be we were going to be seeing sorry should I say an Opteron A100 or 1100 should I say series processors of that obviously that's AMD that were specifically designed for the Amazon cloud but these plans never came to fruition of course and the reason for this apparently is quote AMD failed at meeting all the performance milestones Amazon set out now obviously this is according to reports but if there's that true that's a kind of a scathing comment to be honest so we are most likely going to be seeing more from them in the server space as well this is still really interesting and obviously given that we've had recent shortages from Intel and obviously AMD are doing really well for themselves in terms of Ryzen but there is still kind of a bit of a gap potentially for Amazon to squeeze in with their ARM based efforts especially if they do more server stuff as they are obviously offering cheaper instances to customers when it comes to AWS instances so they could be just going for that sort of middle middle ground we're a bit cheaper but we still give you a good performance kind of level so given how profitable and important the server market is if Amazon were to really push for this and really like bring on as a genuine sort of competitor into this particular marketplace you know we, we could see things shaken up a fair bit for both AMD and Intel so what do you guys think of this one? It's a, it's, it's curious, but uh, I love it. More competition is better for us as consumers. So we're going to round things off with a bit of gaming news now. As well, things haven't really been going all that swimmingly for Bethesda as of late since the release of Fallout 76. Because, well, yeah, it's um, it's gotten mixed feedback just to put it mildly and uh, people have been like demanding refunds and obviously there's that whole thing with people them giving them like some microtransaction credit and all sorts of nonsense going on with this just every day it seems like something else is bubbling up regarding this game just oh dear and then now what we have is a US law firm announcing it's going to be gathering clients for a class action lawsuit against Bethesda for deceptive trade practices. A lawsuit by the name of Migliaccio and Rothod, whose name I probably just butchered, so I do apologise. Uh, they published a blog post last night say, saying it is, quote, currently investigating Bethesda Game Studios for releasing a heavily glitched game, Fallout 76, and refusing to issue refunds of PC purchases of the game if you found it to be unplayable because of technical problems. Now, the statement does acknowledge that, obviously, <laughs> bugs and issues are going to be expected especially with a newly released game it's not exactly unheard of in fact it's more unheard of this not to happen where you get a day one patch and that day one patch fixes a bunch of issues or maybe you get a huge patch like a few days after launch that sort of thing but even a rather extensive day one patch has not put to bed the issues with fallout 76 now the statement also brings to the table those refunds that i just mentioned i didn't bring that up just because it's fun to say or anything. Nope. Basically, according to this, several people have tried to get a refund of this game and have been unable to do so. Even though, especially when it comes to at least here in the UK, if something is not fit for purpose, just by the law you should get a refund and you could argue, well, if it's literally unplayable, I would describe that as not fit for purpose. Now, why were Bethesda giving out microtransactions, I hear you ask? Well, <laughs> Because, you know, these problems aren't limited to just the game itself, apparently, because there's that very expensive Power Armor edition that costs like 200 bucks. That was supposed to include a canvas bag. And uh, apparently, it's made out of nylon, despite the, um, the adverts and things saying to the contrary. And the reasoning for this is, quote, due to the availability of materials, we had to switch to a nylon carrying case in the Fallout 76 Power Armor edition. So you might argue, okay, uh, has this been rectified on the marketing material? Does it clearly state on like the Amazon page or whatever that this is not, it's not canvas, it's nylon? Nope. 
still says that it's Canvas. So yeah, this is extremely early, and I do mean extremely for this class, a class action lawsuit, because basically what they're doing here is looking for things to build their case, for people to get in touch to give them something to go on. No case has actually been brought against the developers. They're basically just asking for you, as in a Fallout 76 owner, to get in touch with them, tell them your experiences with the game, and obviously we're going to be at this for a while, even if it ever does get to the point of a case being brought against Bethesda. And even if they are found to have done this, we might not even see it extend outside the USA. Of course, you know, laws vary country by country. But, oh my lord, this Fallout 76 thing has just been a mess all around. I mean, some people are enjoying the game, and if you're having fun, then, you know, you do you. That's all I say, you know. I'm not going to tell anyone to stop having fun. That's ridiculous. But that doesn't take away the issues that the game's had and the lack of refunds allegedly and these issues with this very expensive edition not being what was advertised and all this sort of stuff so yeah and the fact that it's been discounted so heavily so shortly after release is not exactly uh filling people with confidence let's put it that way so yeah keep an eye on this one guys it's gonna be interesting anyway that's me done for this video thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time